Hello again, this is uh, Jacob Owen, Commercial Systems Engineer with Aruba here in Indiana. I wanted to take some time today to go through the process to enable downloadable user roles on Aruba switches managed by Aruba Central using the user interface or the UI. Um, this is different than when we're using the template group based process. Um, so the first thing we need is we need to get um, a switch inside of Central. So right now I actually have a 2930F um, that is inside of Central. It's called the UI 2930F. Um, the thing to note here is that it has an IP address, has all the required DNS, um, IP connectivity to keep it connected to Central. But then I've also gone through the process to um, create some VLAN um, uh, for you know, devices to be dropped into um, based on the role that's being returned by ClearPass. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we come in and we're going to need to get into the switch to CLI because we're going to actually have to make CLI changes. So the thing to remember here is that we are still allowed to make configuration changes on switches that are managed by Central, but anything that we make in the CLI, if there is a corresponding configuration snippet inside of Central, it will be overwritten. So if I change a VLAN name um, or you know a port assignment, Central is going to override that um, when the switch is returned, you know, to management under Central. Um, but anything that is not that does not have a corresponding configuration um, is going to stay in. So the first thing we do is we're going to go in, we're going to do Aruba Central. Support mode enabled. So what this is going to do is going to tell you, hey, we're going to enable all the CLI commands, but you know they may be overwritten um, after we turn this off. So we're going to say yes. Okay, so now we can do it. Now the other thing we're going to do is we're actually going to put in um, the specific information here that we need to put in the switch. So what I've done here is kind of come up with a list of all the required configuration um, and what each of it is used for. So these commands right here, these are all my radius um, commands. This sets the um, radius server for these two ClearPath servers with the radius key. Uh, dynamic authorization allows a change of authorization. The time window plus or minus is for change of authorization uh, timing. And then the word ClearPath, what this last one does is this actually allows the switches to go out and download the trusted uh, root certificate that is on ClearPasses for its HTTPS. Because the way switches download their user roles is they actually do a HTTPS request, so they have to trust the other side. So we actually can have the switches go through the process to pull down that certificate um, and make sure that it's trusted before we even start the process. The last command here is the RADIUS server CCPM identity. Um, so what this is, is this is actually a username that the switches use to log into ClearPass to download the roles. So this um, username has to be created on ClearPass um, or this will fail. So we're going to go through this, we're going to paste this in. Okay, so that's in there. Um, the next thing is the IP client tracker. So this allows us to um, keep track of IP. Um, addresses for clients um, in the show port access clients output so that way we can actually keep track of you know what IP addresses each of the clients have. Um, the next portion is TACX config. This is really not required for um, downloadable user. I like to use it for um, when I log into these switches I use TACX um, as a authentication method. The next commands here are AAA commands. So these are our, where we actually um, create the AAA server group for Radius, and we're going to call this ClearPass. We're going to add the two hosts that we just defined above into that. Um, we're also going to uh, um, enable um, user roles, and we're going to enable them to be downloaded from ClearPass. Um, the next options are just um, enabling Telnet and SSH to use TACX for logins, and then uh, AAA authentication port access E for Radius server group ClearPass tells the switch to use the ClearPass servers defined in this uh, server group called ClearPass for um, .1x as well as MAC authentication. That's what these two commands do. And then the AAA authentication captive portal enable um, allows the use of captive portal 
um, within our user roles. So we're going to paste that in. Okay. So the next step is now we're going to actually put the um, the Mac authentication on the ports. The thing to note here is that if you want to use more, um, if you want to allow more than one dot uh, one X or client um, on a switch port, you have to define the Mac authentication um, address limits first. Because if you try to put this the dot one X in first with a client limit above one, um, the switch is actually going to uh, kick back an error that says, "Hey, you know, you can't put more than one on the dot one X because Mac off." Our Mac based has an address limit of one by default. So um, we do our Mac authentication first on all eight ports. And then finally, we're going to put the dot one X. So what this first command does is it just enables dot one X on ports two through eight. And then um, the next commands just set the um, TX period of 10 and the client limit of 10, and then the last command down here actually turns the AAA port access authenticator to active, so it turns on the .1x service on the switch. Um, I probably could have collapsed all of these down into three commands or four commands, but I didn't, so here we go. Okay, now I'm getting an error here. Must have been the order. Um, okay, so now what we can do now is we can check the log to make sure that um, the big thing we want to check here is to make sure that yeah, so it's to make sure that um, the certificate authority downloads. So these are the two commands that tell us that. Um, the switch downloaded the two HTTPS certificates from ClearPass to make sure that that exchange would take place um, securely. Um, so now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at ClearPass. Um, we're not going to go through the actual process to set up the downloadable user roles within ClearPass. We're just going to assume that these have been created. Um, uh, I've created some for like a full access employee. Uh, as well as limited access for employees um, using dot one X, as well as a, a guest captive portal and guest uh, post off, IoT, iPhone, network camera. Um, also, if you're using OnGuard and you want to make sure that if a device comes in and it has not had its um, posture assessed, you can actually give them um, a redirect so they can download the OnGuard agent um, securely. Uh, the profiler role, that's actually if a device has never been seen by ClearPass, ClearPass will put it inside of a profiler role allow it to do um, DHCP access, and then as soon as ClearPass sees that device change, um, it's pretty much any of its cat or any of its information on that device, it will um, uh, kick, do a change of authorization, bounce the port, and bring that device back in to have it re-authenticated uh, re now that it has the profile and information. Um, the other thing is if a device is in quarantine status, we can actually push out a quarantine role. Um, so as I said, I'll go through the uh, downloadable roles uh, setup, um, but essentially this is all they pretty they pretty much look like. Um, there's a a class that um, matches traffic, and then there's a policy that determines what to do with that traffic. So in this case, we're matching all traffic, and then we have a policy that does an action permit, which allows everything. So this is a permit all allows everything, and then we then top, um, user policy to the user role name as well as a, a VLAN name. So in this case, we're using VLAN names in lieu of VLAN IDs um, so that this policy can span across a lot of devices. So now what we're going to do, we're going to plug in a device. These are POE devices, so Wait a minute or so for it to come online. OK. 
Okay, so you can actually see that this switch is now downloaded. It has actually downloaded the IoT downloadable user role that we referenced up um, in within ClearPass. Um, so we can actually go in. Seven details. So we can actually go in and see the details of that um, IoT DUR. Uh, so it was a downloaded role, um, untagged VLAN 5, and here's all the information. We'll plug in some other devices. the RPOE devices as well, so they're waiting to come online. So we've got a network camera that's actually come online. Um, and what I've done here is I've actually had, within ClearPass, I've set it up so that the device type is actually returned as the client name. So whenever you look at the show port access clients, it's easy to see, you know, what types of devices, um, you know, that we have on the network. Um, in the case of this port 5, this is actually a, um, a dot one x capable device. You can actually see it here. But this is all done, you know, dynamically. So now, um, you know, once I save this, I do it right, ma'am. And then I come in here. Disable. So this is going to shut off. And now I don't have the ability anymore to make any changes. So now we can come in here. We can kind of wait to see some devices that are connected. Takes a couple minutes. Pause it for a minute. Okay, so now we can see all that these devices that we've connected using downloadable user roles are now showing up um, under the client devices on the switch. So that's how we can enable downloadable user roles very easily. Uh, we just go into the CLI, we do the Aruba support mode, enable. Um, and then we run the AAA command, setup.1x, MAC authentication, um, and then everything else is downloaded from ClearPass. Hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.